No, Kirsten, thanks for approaching me too for this uh, symposium. By the way, I've never you know, given a symposium, so I just want to state that straight up. <laughs> right. um, I wasn't really quite certain what to say. Um, you know, that would, be... and so I thought about something, you know, that was meaningful to me, and I wanted to share it with everyone um, on this symposium, if that's all right. So I'm not sure if it's appropriate or not. <laughs> so if anyone feels it's not, please push back. You know, uh, but I want to talk to, to everyone today about stream flows, Chris and myself a little bit, and how you know our time kind of crosses, you know, in our careers. But just to let everyone know that um, about some of the background, how I'm, you know, how I know Chris is that Chris was on the hiring panel um, at US Geological Survey uh, that brought me on board as a new scientist. Um, it was a very significant influence uh, in my career. He served as my supervisor uh, for almost 10 years, I think, <laughs> somewhere around there, plus or minus, you know, two years or so, I suspect. And during that time, he did serve as my mentor, even though we never really used official title. <laughs> so, um, but he, he did. And through those times, we co-authored a few papers on Streamflow. Uh, and, related to you know, predictions of ungauged basins or pubs, as they're called, you know, through the literature, and uh, trying to estimate these kinds of characteristics, floods, low flows, uh, locations that don't have much information. And another one that I remember fondly is uh, using a physical recession model that Chris was very familiar with uh, to improve low flow predictions, and we came up with a very novel uh, way of doing so. Now, I could go into more detail about you know some of these papers, but I was thinking that you know through the earlier talks and the talks that will follow this uh, this one, um, you know it's very to me plainly obvious because there's been substantial impacts you know across different fields of hydrology, and um, I want to talk about some other remarkable aspects of Chris if that's okay. Um, and so we're going to talk about Chris the scientist. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I find at least his scientific conduct um, equally as impressive as a lot of his contributions to the literature and the impacts that resulted from his contributions. Um, I worked with him, <laughs> working with him on papers through all those years uh, that he mentored me uh, to seeing how to respond properly to reviews, to discussing papers that came up to the literature, bouncing ideas off of one another on Chris's office, off his whiteboard and sitting in his couch. I think it was white, Chris, right? Uh, <laughs> and discussing, you know, potentials for collaboration, ideas, everything else. A lot of things popped into my head about, you know, how Chris conducts himself as a scientist. I think a lot of us on this call today will agree, probably with some of these bullets I have up on here, that whenever I think of Chris, I think of these terms. You know, Chris is highly precise. You know, <laughs> he never obfuscates anything. <laughs> you know, um, he's always to the point and he's concise. That's something I've always learned from working with him. You know, he can pack so much in to such small spaces, I would say, uh, and use such precise, accurate language to describe what he's trying to convey to anyone, to the public, to other scientists, and regular discourse with scientists. And he's always direct, which I've always appreciated from him. And underlying all these things is his modesty, as I think all of us on this call know. And, you know, I have to say, you know, being around meetings, everything else, you know, it's hard to meet a very modest person who has had such large impact on the hydrologic literature in the field. And one thing for this last bullet, it's not a quote from Chris. <laughs> it's every time I think about Chris, this is what always pops into my head, into my language, which is let the work speak for itself. He's never self-promotional. He never overstates or sells anything, <laughs> as I've been seeing a lot of younger scientists doing nowadays. 
And he's never trying to impress others with what he does. And that's something that has always stuck with me through all the years of seeing him operate and working with him, collaborating with him. And it's really, you know, tuned and directed me towards what I, how I, pref how I conduct myself also, or hope to at least, or aspire to. I hope that Chris will have many more times to uh, mentor younger scientists um, like how I was back then to really get influenced and inspired by how Chris conducts himself. And uh, that should remind me about six, seven minutes, as you recall, but um, I want to end it there, if that's all right. I know it's not very conventional, but uh, I just wanted to share those thoughts with everybody. And so thank you. I think that was beautiful, Kenny. Thank you. Hey, Kenny. Um, thank you. I'm really touched by your comments. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, we did spend some time together. We had some fun. We had some good talks. You know, it's characteristic of me that some of those ideas we never got to um, develop, but what we did was, was good and was fun. Um, oh, what I want to say. Um, my, I'm getting old, my, my thoughts slip away. Yeah, you know, we never got out, you never took me out to do stream gauging. I, you know, you were, I think, my one hope. You know, I, I, my, my field work um, credentials are not too thick. And I know, you know, you've done a lot more than of that than I did. And um, you, somehow you managed to span, you know, that, going out in the field and doing the, the theoretical stuff. I really appreciate that in you, and I wish I had gotten a piece of that. Um, <laughs> thanks so much. I, I appreciate you being here and, and what you had to say. Thank you, Chris, very much. Thank you.